Kia ora koutou, no mai hari mai. Welcome this evening to the Government Programs webinar. My name is Poppy Norton and I'm the uh, Professional Programs Recruitment and Partnerships Manager. And so what that means is my role is to help you work out what you might want to study if you're looking at studying with us at Te Hanga Te Waka, Victoria University of Wellington. So like I said in my title, I uh, work for the professional programs. So that's a suite of, of professionally focused postgraduate programs at the Wellington School of Business and Government. And, and today we're going to be talking about um, our government programs in particular. So to give you a summary of how this event is going to work, we're going to talk a little bit about the university, the faculty that these programs belong to, and then we're getting, going to get a little bit more specific about the individual programs that you, you've come to listen to this evening, and then some next steps. We do have a Q&A function, so the question and answer function that will be running as I'm speaking this evening. I have a wonderful team behind the scenes and you will be meeting some of them a bit later on. Um, but please feel free to fire a question through in that Q&A. Please, if you want it to be anonymous, don't put in any email addresses or anything like that, um, because if we do answer them, we might share them live if they're a good question. So if you do have any questions after afterwards or want to follow up, we will have our email address shared. And I'll also be sending you an email directly after this webinar. So please send the Q&A through. We're hopefully leaving some time at the end of this session where I will be reading those questions live. Um, so if we're having some common questions or, or questions that we think are good to, to be answered live, we might be saving them up for the end if you don't get a response as we go throughout. But without further ado, like I said, my name is Poppy and I'll be talking to you throughout this webinar and telling you a little bit more about some of the programs we have here at the Wellington School of Business and Government. Now, but first I do want to introduce the university and if you have been to any of my sessions before you will um, have heard some of this, but we are heading a walk Victoria University of Wellington. So our, our programs, they fall under the Wellington School of Business, but you are part of the wider university community. So I encourage you to find out a little bit more about the university and, and the things that you can get involved in while you're a student with us. We're located in Wellington, the Wellington, uh, capital city of New Zealand. I know we have some international students joining us this evening. So that very bottom image on my screen, that's a, a picture of Wellington on a very beautiful uh, sunny day. And, and what you'll see is some circles uh, and that represents where we are located across the city. Wellington is quite a compact city, uh, although it is the capital, it's really easy to get around, really easy to move around. And I will be showing you some pictures later of where we are located uh, in, in the capital city. But in, on the image at the bottom of my screen, you'll see where some of our other campuses are. So we do have campuses or, or dedicated teaching spaces for specific programs. And, and so I encourage you, like I said, to have a wee look at, at the university itself and, and where it is situated in, in the city. Now, here are some more facts about Wellington. If, if you don't know Wellington, um, you can have a look on the, there's a link on the screen there and find out a little bit more about the city. But I was speaking to a student the other day and I think the best way to describe it is the way they came up with. And they said, Wellington is full of really engaged people, really engaged community wise, really engaged with the culture and really engaged with the politics. So it's, it's a really amazing place to be studying in particular the government programs or anything in, in the Wellington School of Business and Government. Now, specifically, the Wellington School of Business and Government, that's the faculty that our programs fall underneath. And again, hopefully you can see that image on my screen. It's, it's the zoomed in version of the image I had before. For those of you who do know Wellington and, and, and know a little bit about the, the city and, and where things are located, you'll hopefully recognize that image on my screen. It's the Wellington waterfront and then down in the middle, you should hopefully recognize a building or two there. And that's the beehive and the government buildings. Literally just across the road from that is where we are located. So Rutherford House and government buildings, our law school, is where um, we, our programs are taught from. And, and so you'll see we're really, really close to the beehive, our government, where laws are being made and changed, where policy is being formed. And we've got a really close connection with lots of ministries uh, all around our campus. So it's an amazing place to study. You just see all of these things happening um, around you every day. 
There's another zoomed in image at the very bottom there. So a little bit more, hopefully you can see that. So you hopefully there recognize the beehive, that's the round building and parliament right next door. Uh, and then the two buildings behind that, that, those are the buildings I was referring to before. So our law school just behind the, the beehive and then we have Rutherford House, which is where we teach our, our Wellington School of Business and Government programs. The campus, if you are in Wellington, I encourage you to check it out. So here's an image of the inside of Rutherford House. It is a really beautiful campus. It's very modern. Um, and the very last image on my screen is our student study space. Now at the professional programs, we have a variety of students. We have about 600 students across all of the programs we do offer and a wide range of ages. Our youngest student is, is early 20s, our oldest student is in their 70s. So we do have that very diverse range. And what we find is majority of our students, about 80% of them, they study while they're working. So they might be studying part time alongside full time work. The dedicated student study space is a fantastic resource for our students. It's a space that they can go and dedicate time to their study, individual study. It's an area that they can study together, network with the other professional program students. Uh, there's free printing, there's breakout rooms that they can use. And it's something we've had really good feedback from from our students when they're saying they've got a really busy life, they've got their work, or they might have kids or family commitments. So having that space that they can actually have some time time out and dedicate to them and their study is really beneficial. So if you are able to come and check out the campus, I encourage you to come along. It's a big public space, so you're welcome to just come in uh, and we can show you that professional program space if it's something you want to find out a little bit more about. Now that was uh, a very quick summary of the university and, and who we are as a faculty, but I know that you're here this evening to be listening to or finding out more about our government programs. So that's our public policy and Master of Public Policy and the certificate and the diploma that fall underneath that and our Master of Public Management and the certificate and diploma that fall underneath that. So what I want to do before we go into this, the specifics, I want to introduce to you a very important person in these programs, uh, to mo sorry, Dr. Amanda Wolf. So she is the academic program leader, someone you will get to know very well if you study these programs. So I'd like to invite her today just to introduce herself and talk to you a little bit and introduce the programs that we'll be discussing. So I'll invite Amanda to come and speak. Uh, kia ora everyone and thank you so much Poppy. If Poppy had continued her tour around and zoomed up eight levels in Rutherford House she would come to where we're currently located and where my office is as the academic program leader of the Master of Public Policy and the Master of Public Management. So I just want to say a very few things um, to orient you to what we're doing and where we've come from. Both programs have been going for decades and they've been going specifically for professional learners just like you. People who have some experience in government or in public service related professions, be that NGO related, maybe you've been a press secretary for a minister, maybe you work in a local government or regional government context, or maybe you just have had interactions with uh, policy as a representative of the business community and so on. So um, as Poppy has already mentioned, there's a huge diversity of students. And I think we have one of every kind in our programs. It's a relatively large program with uh, students from all over the world, all over New Zealand and across the age range and range of experiences. Um, the program itself is quite interdisciplinary. Our lecturers and teachers come from backgrounds both within the public service of quite a range of experience and also educational backgrounds in economics, political science, sociology, philosophy, law, and so on. Uh, if you choose to study in the Master of Public Policy or the Master of Public Management, whichever program it is, you will increase your skills in your um, abilities to engage in the policy process be that as a policy advisor, a policy analyst, uh, implementer of policies, or a manager, senior manager of workforces and policy implementation. You will, you will enhance your skills in 
synthesizing and problem solving and working with data and um, thinking critically. You will learn and enhance how to communicate with diverse groups of people, diverse stakeholders, take into account different perspectives in our changing society. We keep our material incredibly current. It's a bit of a work job for us uh, teachers to always be updating our material so it's always relevant, uh, taking into account the issues of the day and the issues of interest to you. You learn from each other and the experiences that students bring into the classroom. And those students, I couldn't begin to sort of picture the variety of what they bring into um, the classroom. But I can um, tell you that you will have an opportunity to tailor your learning to your particular interest and your passion. So you're never forced to go in depth on something that you care nothing about when there's an opportunity to further your skill development and your knowledge in an area of interest to you. And that culminates in a capstone experience in either degree where you integrate what you've learned across your program. If you uh, undertake a research project as a requirement in the MPP or as an elective, you can go in depth in a topic of interest to you. And recent students have looked at um, cybersecurity, integrated food policy, climate refugees, early childhood education, waste minimization, uh, users' experiences of e-government, and it goes on and on. And you're learning from people whose breadth of research interests is equally broad, from child welfare and well-being to government procurement, integrity in government, sustainability, public sector autonomy, policy success, and it goes on and on. So our compass is quite broad, our experience is quite deep, our enthusiasm is enormous, and we really welcome you to find out more about what you would study and what you can gain from an MPP or an MPM. I'm going to shortly hand back over to Poppy who will take you through all the facts and details, but I'll be here and I'll contribute to the live Q&A at the end. And also just to acknowledge those people who might be tuning in sometime later and it's no longer evening and we're no longer live, but I'm always available to answer your questions. Please do get in touch if I can help in any way. So back over to you, Poppy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda. So like Amanda said, she is behind the scenes answering those questions. So please do send, send them through um, while I'm going to be talking about them individually. Um, so, but what I wanted to do first, before we started talking about the Master of Public Policy and the Master of Public Management, I wanted to talk about some similarities or, or the background behind some of the programs. And I know Amanda did a, a wonderful job, but I'm not sure what I can add from that. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, wh why we have these programs or, or why they've been developed. So. The, the first thing I wanted to mention is they have been designed to enhance your career potential. So like Amanda said, we've got a wealth of, of background and diverse learners in, in these particular programs. And they're typically bringing their experience that they've had working in the public sector or, or wanting to grow that knowledge. And so what you're learning in your classes is the academic non content that you need. You're looking at different theories and you're also looking at how you can apply it and, and really bringing that to your, your day to day work life at working in the public sector. The second thing is around the applied learning aspect of it. So you are, it's up, sorry, our programs are professionally focused, like I said, right at the beginning. So it means that you are really getting to apply what you're learning in the classroom uh, uh, to your assignments or to your every day. And it's also the way, not only that the courses are taught, but how your classes are assessed. So in these two programs, we don't have exams, but instead you get uh, assessed through a variety of different means. So you might be doing blogs uh, as through your assessment or presentations or, or working on a project. So it's really building up those skills that you will need when you're working in the public sector and, and really enhancing them and fine tuning. The other thing is, like I said, a lot of our students, they are working while they study. And so our programs have been designed in a way that allows you to do that. Typically for a lot of our, our classes for these two programs is we teach them through block or mo modular format. And what that means is that you come to class 
but you might come to class for a full day or, or half a day and then um, you don't come again to class for six weeks but you're still doing some study in that time and then after your six week period you come back for another block day again a further six weeks later you come back for that final block day so the classes are, are designed in that way. So you're still getting that engagement. You're still able to study with other students, whether that's online and engaging through Zoom discussions or whether you're in class and you're working with the groups of people who are there um, in, in that classroom environment. So you're still getting that contact time and, and those classes, but you are able then to fit it around your very busy day-to-day -day lives. Typically, when you are looking at study and, and if you are looking at studying alongside work, what's important is to think about how many hours per week you might be needing to dedicate to your study. So for each course, a 15 point course, which the majority of ours are, we say you want to think about about 10 to 12 hours per week of study. That's what you'll be dedicating to it. So that includes your class time when you have it, but that's also you might be working on your assignments or doing readings or everything else that goes alongside your study. We tend to say 10 to 12 hours per week. So if you are looking at, at working, typically our part-time students, they take one to two courses per trimester um, and full-time students up to three is recommended um, for that full-time workload. I also encourage you to look at who will be teaching you. And Amanda did talk a little bit about that, about all the, the researchers and the academics who are there sharing their knowledge with you. And, and the academics are heavily involved with uh, the public sector. They're contributing to the policy and, um, and ministries. So I definitely encourage you to, to see who would you who you would be studying with and learning from, and, and also the connections that you might be able to gain from, from that. Like I said just then, there's a lot of public sector connections. So being in Wellington and the capital city, we do have ministries surrounding the campus, the Beehive and government just across the road. Even if you're not physically based in Wellington, you still get to draw on the connections that we have being the uh, capital city uh, and your academics, also your, your future colleagues or staff, uh, sorry, students that you're studying alongside. Because of that work experience re requirement, or a lot of our students do come from the public sector, you're building an amazing network and cohort of students that you're really getting to grow that, that uh, sector and, and networks among the, the government programs. And, and finally, something that both programs have in common is the staircasing. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of what this means, so I do want to explain, go into it a little bit. And, and what it really means is we have three qualifications that falls under one header. So when we talk about public policy, for example, you can study the Master of Public Policy, but there's also a certificate and a diploma option. And what that means is if you want to start off with the postgraduate certificate, sorry, postgraduate certificate, you take four courses. These are four courses from the masters. They're not taught at any different level. And what it just means for the certificate, you're completing four. At that point, you can finish if you would like, or you can add on another four courses. So you complete eight overall and you get this postgraduate diploma. And finally, if you add three or four more courses, depending on what program you take, you can end up with the masters. The programs are staircased, so it means that we do have students who work their way up throughout the qualification. So if enrolling into a master's right now feels like a little bit too much, you can definitely start off with the certificate or the diploma. It also works the other way. So if you decide you would like to do the master's, but you need to have a break for some reason or, or decide not to keep going, then you can look at finishing with the certificate or diploma. So either option is absolutely fine. Now, I will start talking specifically about the individual programs. So I'm going to start off with the Master of Public Policy. So everything or a lot of things I'm talking about, I, I will be calling it the Master of Public Policy, but it does refer to the, the typically the postgraduate certificate and diploma as well. But in the public policy program, this is for people who are really interested in, in policy, the way it currently works, how you can help influence it, how you can feed into policy being made, and, and learning more about the public sector. So there's some quick facts on the screen, and these ones, uh, the top one there, the duration, that does refer to the full masters. 
So the, the minimum duration for the full masters is four trimesters or 16 months. Now I will quickly just clarify what I mean by trimesters because that's a word that I am gonna say a fair bit as I go throughout this presentation. Here at Taranga Walker Victoria University of Wellington, we talk about trimesters. Lots of other universities or other um, city places, you might have heard um, them refer to them as semesters. They're exactly the same thing, but we talk about trimester one, so February to June, trimester two, which is July to October, and then our summer school period, we refer to that as trimester three. So that's November to February. We do have courses on offer over that trimester three period. And we do find that our professional students, while they're, they're working, they do sometimes like to take courses in that period. So you can study at three different points throughout the year. So that's why we call them trimesters. So the minimum duration for the masters, like it says on the screen, it's four trimesters, so it takes just over a year to complete. The delivery mode I've already talked about, it's a modular and block. So that's meaning that you come in for those full days spread out every six months, or, uh, sorry, not six months, six weeks or so. The location option, so where you'll actually be studying, you do have a choice in these two programs. You can either be coming to class or for a lot of them, you can be um, engaging online. And um, so through synchronous or asynchronous teaching. So it means that if uh, you might be attending class through Zoom and you're involved in the discussions that are going on um, throughout the, the class time. Um, and finally, I'll just mention the intakes. So the, we do have intakes across the three trimesters. Predominantly trimester one is typically the most common time that people start, so that's February. You can start in July though. And um, we do, if you start at a different trimester, want to make sure you have a good course plan if you're wanting to study full time, so you can take the right courses to help you uh, finish your study in the shortest period. Um, and finally, we do have some people who start in November. Again, we do like to have a chat with you if you're thinking about starting in November, uh, it, particularly with, if you're studying part time, that's more of an option and we can just make sure you're taking the right course. So most common for people to start in February, but we can uh, help you if you are thinking about starting in different periods. Um, and then right there at the bottom that I've got my the three qualifications that fall underneath this header. So postgraduate certificate in public policy, postgraduate diploma, um, and then the masters as well. Now, I'm just going to talk through the structure of the, this program. So um, for the master of public policy, that you have a set of core or required courses. Now these courses are ones if you take the full master's program, you have to take, which is why we call them uh, the core courses or the required courses. These ones here um, are on the screen now. So they are courses in, in governance or um, quantitative analysis. Uh, you look at economics, um, uh, policy workshops. So they're courses that are, are really foundational to the, the full masters. Once we, we want you to have taken, um, so you can't finish without doing these for the full masters program. But then you have some flexibility and Amanda talked about this. So you have four elective courses that you can um, really pick and choose what courses you want to take alongside the, the core courses. And they can be really from across the um, wide range of offerings at the Wellington School of Business and Government. So we do have um, some um, more common electives that people typically take. So something like e-government, which is about digital transformation in, in the government sector. Um, there's also health and wellbeing courses that our students can take. Um, and if you take three in a particular area, you can actually get a specialization in that the particular subject. So I definitely encourage you to have a look at what subjects you might want to be taking alongside um, or in this particular program. And then finally, for our Master of Public Policy, uh, we have a research project. So this one is a little, it's a little bit bigger in terms of workload than our other ones. So it's a 30 point course, and that actually spans two trimesters um, of study. So a couple of things to note, if you are studying part time, which a lot of our students are, you do actually have some flexibility with what courses you take in one particular order. 
We do like you though to take your research project uh, in your final trimester um, and some of our electives may require you to have a particular background to get into them. There are those some um, that you don't have to have any knowledge in that particular area. So if you do want to have a chat about those electives, definitely get in touch. So that's our public policy program. Uh, so if you do have any questions about anything that I haven't covered, please feel free to send them through to the Q&A like we, we've mentioned. Um, but now I am going to be talking about the Master of Public Management. Now this program here is, is for people who are interested in um, bringing that policy and, and putting it into practice. So it's, it's managing people, managing organizations in, in, in the public sector. Um, and having a really strong sense of um, integrity and, and purpose. So the quick facts you'll see are quite similar to the other program. It has a very similar duration. Um, so the 16 months or, or four trimesters. It's taught again in that same way through modular or block format um, on campus and on online. And you can, with this one, start in those trimesters. But I will say again, if you are looking at studying full time, um, it might not be possible to start in, in trimester three, for example, um, also trimester two. So definitely have a chat with us if you're thinking about full time study, but part time study, it's a little bit more flexible for you when when you do start. So the courses looks again very similar to public policy. So we do have that that core there or those required courses, uh, but these ones do vary from what you would be taking in the public policy program. So you'll notice that the names here are a bit different. So it's looking at public managers, managing for results, um, managing people, managing organizations, community organizations. Um, and then that you could have a choice of quantitative analysis or, or research skills, public managers. So here are the set of those required or core courses. You also have the option to have electives and this works in a really similar way to that public policy program. But what you'll notice for the public management is you actually get a choice of five electives. The specialization works in the same way. So you can specialize in e-government, health and well-being, or uh, public policy even. So you can give your program that unique flavor that will help you with your career goals or interest areas and bring it into the, the full uh, masters. And then finally, with this Master of Public Management program, we have a capstone course. So again, that's a course we like you to take in your final trimester. And that really brings together what you've been studying across your, your time with us um, and, and bringing everything you, you kind of learnt and putting it into practice. So just before um, uh, we, we kind of kick into the what, what you need to start thinking about if you want to be studying. I do want to mention this uh, pathway here. So when Amanda was talking before about who these there are um, programs and, and you have work experience requirements to get into them, we do have this option which we call a graduate pathway. And this is for students who uh, have just finished a bachelor's degree, don't have that work experience, but are really interested about moving into the public sector um, field and, and want to learn a little bit more. So this program you can, um, so this pathway, you can enroll in the Master of Public Policy or the Master of Public Management, um, but to be accepted through the graduate pathway, so without that work experience, um, we do look at your grades from your undergraduate study. Um, there is a, a cohort of students that you would study alongside who've also entered throughout this graduate pathway, and there is mentorship and, and guide, um, guidance throughout your, your program. So if you are listening to this webinar, and, and you've just finished your bachelor's degree, definitely have a look into this graduate pathway option uh, to apply. There's all this information online about it. And there is a scholarship that you can apply for that you um, might accompany your study as well. But I will just quickly talk about the um, requirements or, or the next steps if you're thinking about studying with, with us in either of the two programs that I've been talking about this evening. So first, I know we have quite a few international students who've been who are joining us to this webinar. So if you haven't been in touch with already, I recommend you contact Wellington University International. 
They're our wonderful international team and they can help you with student visas and um, talking about finances, scholarships and um, anything that you might have questions about, about moving to New Zealand or, or studying online um, at this point in time. They are the best people to help you and, and they'll be able to guide you through what you need to, to be considering. One of the amazing things though about this particular program is we are teaching our courses online so you can get started with your study if you're overseas at the moment and would like to start studying with us then it's a really good option to be considering that online learning. And next thing I want to touch is just the finance. We do get asked about this quite a lot. So the fees that I have on my screen right now they are for the full master's program. So how fees uh, work is it's typically per course that you're completing. So if you are thinking about starting with the certificate or the diploma, you can jump on our website and find out what those fees are. But for the domestic students, uh, international students for the master's programs, and um, their fees are what I have on my screen for 2021. So another question I then get is, is, uh, is there any financial support or, or any scholarships or anything I can apply for? So I definitely recommend you have a look on our website for, uh, we have a scholarship database. So that collates all of the scholarships that are available for our students and you can filter it um, to fit your certain criteria. I've just seen on the website, it's just been announced, there is a scholarship for coursework and master's programs or postgraduate programs for 2021 for domestic students. So if you are a domestic student and wanting to look for a scholarship, definitely jump on the website, have a look at that one um, and, and apply for it if it matches your criteria. Another thing we get asked about is StudyLink. So StudyLink is our student loan um, provider for, for New Zealand students. And so definitely start looking um, at them, start applying. It can take a little bit of time to provide all the paperwork. So if you are getting a student loan through StudyLink, jump online and have a look at their website. And finally, something I do just quickly want to touch on uh, is our fees, the fees free scheme. So this is for students who haven't uh, studied at tertiary level before. And um, you can, if you apply to one of our programs and you don't have a bachelor's degree, uh, we can look at work experience. Uh, it goes through uh, Dr. Amanda Wolf. Uh, and if you are eligible for that, you might also be eligible for the fees free scheme. So definitely have a look through that. All the URLs are on my screen and um, some of them are not to do with the university so they're the best people to contact if you do have questions about any of those areas. Uh, finally, just quickly touching on the entry requirements and then how to apply. So typically our students are required to have a bachelor's degree. It can be in any field. You don't have to have studied public policy or public management previously. Uh, we do ask you to have that work experience though typically. So that's two years of work experience in the public sector or the public service. And this can be really, really diverse. So I have some examples on my screen of where people come from. Um, but Amanda mentioned them before as well. We do have people who come from a variety of backgrounds and um, bring a wealth of experience into the program. So definitely, if you're not sure if you, you qualify, please get in touch with us. We can have a chat with you and, and see if this is a good program for you. Um, but typically, it's the two years of work experience in the public sector or public service. And then finally, you need approval from the academic program leader. So when you are applying uh, international students, you can apply through Wellington University International, who were on the screen just a little bit earlier, and they approve your admission. Um, and then if you get approved, then you receive an offer of place and you accept your offer of place. For domestic students, it's quite similar. You do apply online as well. And uh, for both uh, groups, international and domestic, you do need to supply some supporting documents. And what we mean there is a thing is your CV. So when we ask for you to have work experience to get into the program, we would like to see your CV when you're applying to see what you've been doing. The CV can just be like when you're applying for a job, it doesn't have to be really any different. And um, it's just to see that work experience that you have. You're also required to provide a, a reference, um, a reference typically from your, your current employer, which accompanies your application, and then any academic transcripts or previous study that you, ha you ha um, have completed. And then finally, you get accepted, you have your approval and you get accepted, um, and then you get sent a thing called an offer of study, and you're happy with that, you click accept. 
If you are looking at studying with us uh, in the new year, so our February intake, uh, our enrolments close on the 20th of January. We definitely encourage you to apply earlier than that because of all that paperwork that I just mentioned. We typically say it's a good idea to apply before Christmas, um, but if you can't do that, that's absolutely fine. 20th of January is your enrollment deadline. And um, so hopefully I've given you lots of information um, and talked about the programs, but I am going to open up to the, the Q&A. So what we'll do is I'll, I'll just bear with me while I bring it up on my screen. I'm going to invite um, Amanda back and, and we're going to just go through those, those questions that hopefully have been being sent in while we've been speaking. Perfect. So I'm not sure if you can see the questions, Amanda, but the first mm -hmm. one here is if you choose to do a course online, do you still need to come in person, um, in person classes every six weeks? So I'll, I'll hand over to you to answer that one. Yes, and thank you for that question. I saw that it popped up quite a while, uh, while ago and Poppy may have already touched on that. We're really happy to be able to accommodate people who study in Wellington face-to-face -face or throughout New Zealand and are able to travel in uh, to study in these block, um, that block uh, days that Poppy mentioned. But equally, every course that we offer in 2021 is also available for remote study. And what we mean by that is that you're able to um, achieve all the learning objectives of the course without ever setting foot in Wellington. Uh, each course has a slightly different way of achieving that. Sometimes you zoom into the lecture room where the face-to-face -face students are meeting at the same time. And there's a fair bit of interaction between people who are coming in from Zoom and people in the room. Sometimes you're watching along with the people in Wellington, uh, pre-recorded videos, and then coming together in discussion groups, either with people mixed throughout the, the enrollment wherever they may be in the world or specific questions uh, sorry specific discussions organized for people on zoom versus people face to face so the short answer is yes you can study without ever coming to wellington and uh, we think that's a really uh, exciting development that we all know what has triggered it but we're really on board with it and um, again if you have any concerns about it uh, time of day issues, uh, internet connectivity, things like that. Just have a chat with me and we'll go through what you might need and what might be required for you to actively engage in those courses. So there's another question here, Poppy, shall I take it? Um, <laughs> is it still possible to enroll to start, the, start part time in trimester three? It's getting really tight because the trimester actually starts on the 9th of November. However, um, depends on how quickly that paperwork can get in and processed. So I would say um, it depends. I think we better just have, you have a wee chat with Poppy about that. But definitely not too late for trimester one. We've either done a very good job of explaining the programs or we've scared people off. Oh no, we've got another um, question coming in. Grades what for, yes, undergraduate grades for entry under the graduate pathway. One thing you'll um, have seen from Poppy's slide on the entry requirements is there are three specific requirements. One has to do with your bachelor's degree, one has to do with your work experience, and one has to do with essentially my judgment of what the package looks like. And that allows me to take into account your referee report, your um, interest in the program. The grad pathway does ask for two references as opposed to one. It also asks you for a short statement, sort of in the range of 300 words that tell us a little bit more about you. And people who are shortlisted for entry in the grad pathway will also have an interview. So what that means is that yes, grades matter, but they're not the only thing. And we look at the full range of what you offer. And to some degree that goes for anybody applying for graduate study, because guess what? We want you to succeed. 
we don't want you just to get into the front door. We want you to gain um, a tremendous experience while you're here. Um, all that said, for graduate pathway entry, we really are hoping to see something in the range of a B or a B plus bachelor's GPA. Question about where can I find elective options? Um, we're actually in the process of trying to pull together lists all in one place. It's one of those weird things in that I think as Poppy has indicated, you can take an elective from a huge range of topics. So the really quick answer is just have a look around the university and you can see what the electives that you might use, that you might take are. Um, there is a, a, a limit on the level, however. So for credit in the master's or certificate or diploma, they need to be four or 500 level courses. Um, probably shortly by the, towards the end of the year, we'll have more specific information, which um, lists electives, not only that you can take, but that actually fit nicely into your schedule because believe it or not, that can be one of the most difficult things to organize. Because if you think of it, if you're taking required courses, but also having to slot in electives, you have to be sure they don't clash. So we're working on that. And again, probably the best thing is for you to get in touch with me and say, this is what I'd like to study. Am I going to be able to do it easily? Or is it going to be tricky? A question about, is there support for finding work post-graduation? Um, in the field, um, internships, et cetera. We have a fabulous team of career advisors at the university, and we really um, feel that they're your best port of call for uh, specific advice on job opportunities. Every year there are job fairs as well, where employers come into Rutherford House and set up booths and talk to people about um, work opportunities. Because so many of our students are already employed uh, in the public sector or um, international students who are on a leave from their job, we actually don't have a huge number of people who are actively looking for work post-study. That said, your network of, of peers in the program who are already in work may be one of your best connections for getting uh, advice on job opportunities. Uh, finally, we do have an opportunity for you to study uh, your to, to undertake your research project in the MPP or as an elective in the MPM with a sponsor agency. And that's our response to uh, what is often offered as an internship internationally. So in that uh, setting, you undertake a research study, but you do it for an agency with sponsorship and you work um, ideally at that agency. A uh, question about specializations. I think we have a minute more, don't we, Poppy? We do, yeah. Um, specializations are a special note on your transcript that indicates that you have concentrated your electives in a particular area. Usually that is by a subject code so the simplest example is a public policy student who specializes in public management by taking three courses in public management. Uh, you may also take uh, courses in the range of specializations that are offered throughout the Wellington School of Business and Government, and those are indicated on your transcript. Uh, regardless of how it's indicated, you specialize you, you choose your subjects, you choose what you want to know more about, and then you're able to present yourself through your CV and at an interview as having a certain base of knowledge. And that's really what we're trying to foster with the way we've uh, embedded flexibility into our degree structure. Those are fast, uh, fantastic questions. I really want to acknowledge everyone who's turned up uh, this evening. And again, just encourage you to follow up with a question uh, to me by email or to uh, Poppy and her team in the Professional Programs Office. Brilliant. 
I think that might be all the questions that have come through. So um, I, I want to uh, reiterate what Amanda said, please definitely get in touch if you do have any questions. Um, we're more than happy to help you work out a little bit more about the programs and help you with those elective offerings. Um, so please definitely get in touch. But I think for now, that's all the questions that are coming through and we've got 6.15 on the dot. So we're perfect uh, to timing there. And um, so we will leave you this evening uh, or morning, wherever you are Zooming in from and um, but for now I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful day evening morning wherever you are Matewa